Paul Siegert uh, from PCS Advisors, a managing partner there, is always there to help us figure out what's really going on, why is it going on, and what you can do about it. And Paul joins us now. Welcome to the program, Paul. Glad to be back. How are you today? I'm well, except I was troubled by the fact, if, if I remember right, the last uh, inflation report that came out last week was, what, 0.8% month over month uh, for, for uh, health care. What's driving that, and where are we headed well, we get insulated from it. You you know better than many, I'm sure. These insurance companies go out and negotiate multi-year contracts. And even though prices have been going up, you haven't been able to necessarily, your reimbursements haven't increased. And now a lot of those contracts are coming to an end. And so as these negotiations come come around again, I think a lot of that will now start to pass through into health plans. And we're going to see premiums go up. So there's there's some pretty scary times ahead, I think, in terms of increases in premium for health care or health insurance, yeah. rather. Well, and I think what what people may not realize listening is that, you know, when you're getting employer provided insurance, traditional, you know, employer provided insurance, the employer is paying the bulk of that premium, and you have to pay right. your share, right? right? That 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 out of pocket, just the premium cost. Well, not to mention deductibles and other you know out of pocket costs have gradually and sometimes not so gradually gone up, right? For the for the individual, for oh, the yeah. employee, absolutely. If you look at our report card since the Affordable Care Act kicked in, uh, deductibles have grown eighty seven percent. Premiums more than that for many employers. Uh, not a whole lot less than that for just about any employers. And during that same stretch of time, I think the thing we don't talk enough about is that we've shifted a ton of cost to consumers in the growing deductibles and co-insurance and max out-of-pockets that they face and co-pays and all of that, all the different words we've come up with to say their share of cost. And that has resulted in 100 million Americans having medical debt. And we only have 30 million uninsured. And they're probably not all in that group. So, you know, so north of 70 million people with insurance in this country have medical debt uh, because of the way this thing has evolved. I mean, that's a crazy, crazy thing. And and I was reading here within the last week or two, the solution that, that we've come up with is to change the way that credit bureaus report that. So we're essentially going to kind of sweep it under the rug a little bit rather than address why or ask, have a public forum as to why things are, <laughs> why is this happening? What can we do about it? It's a, it's a tough problem because, I mean, folks are really struggling with just general consumer inflation right. for putting food on the table and clothes on your back and, you know, heating and cooling your house. Um, now, I, I can't imagine that employers are going to continue to, well, are going to bear the burden of what appears to be more, you know, more price increases coming as these contracts, the old contracts uh, phase out and with increased health care costs through pandemic and other things, because we're going to talk about right. the source labor. of those costs and labor. Um, what does that mean? I mean, does that mean folks are going to be paying, you know, more and more and more, right? Well, it really does. And it we've got this system. If you look at a macro level, you step back and you say, what's happening? Who's footing the bill? All this. Those those enrolled in employer plans. In 1999, we had 67% of our population was getting their coverage through their employer. We're down to 58% now. So there is a long-term tr downward trend there. And it's because of the things we're talking about. It gets to a point, a breaking point, especially for small employers, where it's just simply not sustainable. And for them at their level, at their P&L, and then they look at their employees and, and say, you know what, I think some of our people would be better off if we didn't offer coverage and they just went to the exchange and got a subsidy. And that's that's a trend that we're seeing. I think it's going to accelerate with everything going on right now because these ex the exchanges, uh, the median increase across 72 markets right now is 10% increase in premium through the exchanges. Through the exchange? Get, that's right. That's right. And a lot of people will get insulated from that if they're getting subsidy, which we did, the Inflation Reduction Act or whatever, you know, that's what it's officially called, pushed those subsidies out to 2025, where we don't have the 400% of federal poverty level rule to stop getting a subsidy and so on. So we're going to, those people will get insulated from the that increase. They won't feel it, really. But then you have, so then it's it's really left to small employers to, again, kind of carry the load and get uh, the heaviest burden in this area. 
Yeah. Well, let's look at it from the small employer um, perspective, uh, because we have a lot of uh, small businesses in this growing community uh, here in, uh, in well, not only mid-Missouri, but all across Missouri. There's just a lot of, a lot of good things happening business-wise, despite, you know, the economy. Right. But there comes, like you say, there's a point where people have to ask themselves each sign-up, man, can I continue to afford to do this? What can small employers do? What other options are there other than just continuing to just suck it up and say, oh, man, another 10% increase? Ugh. What can they do? Well, it's a great question. And there are things you can do. I know we've trained them to feel powerless and to feel as though they have no transparency. They're just buying a commodity. They have no control over cost. If that's what you're hearing, find find a new advisor or consultant, or at least put your feelers out. Because there is a, I can tell you, and it's a very positive message, there's a growing number of consultants out there who want to be part of the solution to how we pay for healthcare in this country and do it in a way that doesn't create losers, in any any losers at all in the transaction. Make it mm-hmm. more where it's direct between provider and customer and so on. Yeah. There are alternatives. And if you have a, and so ask your consultant that you work with, and if they don't have any answers other than hey this is this is kind of the way it is then then look around because there are good options out there for employers yeah i mean i think this is a time of uh, you know it's often pain in an industry and mm-hmm. and difficult times often breeds a lot of um, innovation and disruption. And that's what's going on right now. So this is actually a time where uh, you have to watch it because there's a lot of, you know, (laughs) you got to be careful. But there are some options out there and things are developing. You don't want to get scammed. But with someone who, like yourself and others, there's others in the market who can who can offer you yeah. some other some other advice. That's true. Um, why why are healthcare costs going up so much? I know why. Partly, I think it has to do with labor. But but what about supply chain issues too? Both of these things. I mean, the cost of everything is more now. Uh, energy is is when you think of of goods. Energy accounts is part of all of that, how it gets to you, how it's made. So it's unrealistic to think that healthcare would be insulated somehow from inflation. And healthcare inflation is usually run two to two and a half times CPI. And that's a scary thing to say right now uh, when, when we're sitting here in this, in this high CPI environment. So it was, it's not a surprise to me at all or others, I think, that watch it closely that this is happening. It was, it's just delayed because of the way this industry works, but uh, in the, not delayed in the sense of the costs that are being borne by providers. providers. Many providers have been dealing with much higher costs. They just couldn't necessarily get compensated at a higher level to deal with it, which is why we have 50 Bloomberg. I was reading Bloomberg today. 53% of U.S. hospitals expect to lose money this year. Yeah. Uh, that's I, Hoffman Hall did that. I mean, that's incredible when you think about well, it. Well, I, I, I know some local small and, well, regional and local um, small and uh, hospitals, as well as well, I heard that uh, even Massachusetts General is going to post a big, or they did post a big loss in the first or second quarter. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of disruption going on and a lot of, uh, but again, a lot of opportunity. And I think that a savvy businessman uh, or woman, a savvy employee or employee group can Start to talk about creative ways along with a creative advisor to try to get, uh, you know, look at things in a different perspective. And uh, I hope we can start uh, in future conversations, we can maybe unpack some of those ideas because I think some of those may be beginning to, uh, well, I know they are. They're beginning to happen here in this area Without as well. A doubt. So we it's can the wild talk. west, I think, of solving this. Which yeah. <laughs> is, it's your point that, that you know, there, it's sometimes tough or maybe you, you've got to be hesitant a little bit because there's a lot of great ideas and not as many good executors of those ideas. Yeah, no doubt sure. about it. Well, Paul Siegert from PCS Advisors at PCSAdvisors.com. Appreciate you very much, and uh, thanks for unpacking this for us. I just wanted folks to be aware so they don't get hit with, because it's going to be sign-up time pretty soon. I mean, open enrollment's going to start when? October-ish, November? All right, that's when most plans are rolled out. Yep. And, um, and into it. People should uh, should be talking now with HR. And if you're a leader, and let's say you're a union leader, maybe you're a leader of a of a you know of a group of employees in a smaller business. Um, you know, talk now to your employer about how you can work with the employer. And uh, similarly, employers, like, you know, maybe you can cut out some middlemen. Maybe you can do some direct relationships. Those kind of things are cooking. So uh, we'll be talking more in detail about those as we move forward in the season. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Have a great evening, my friend.